What's going on everyone? Wildcard here bringing you the Pokemon mode um, breeding guide that I said I would be doing this. So um, I'm doing it from Kanto. So the breeding area for Kanto is on Four Island, which I'm at right now. So before I get into the actual breeding for perfect 5 IV or 6 IV if you want a um, Pokemon, first um, let's just check out the inside this DK here but before I do that um I have a free magnemite on me one has max um, HP because the max amount of IVs you could have is 31 and this other one has 31 defense now I'm going to be breeding two of them together to end up with a magnemite that has max IVs and HP and defense and um, this third Magnemite that I have here is one that I've bred from before, it's the wrong nature, but it has 5 IV and I'm going to be using this later on to get a timid nature uh, Magnemite. Probably won't be showing that in this video, well I won't be showing that in this video, but um, eventually yeah I would be doing that. And um, I'll be explaining how to get to this 5 IV. You could do 6 IV if you want, but Magnemite doesn't use this attack if you're basically using it for special attack so doesn't make sense to get it for get a stat that you're not using it for but um if you want to you could go ahead and do it i'll still explain to you how to do it so in order to do this because it's for hp and defense uh, we have this lady inside the daycare center here selling the power items now this one obviously power weight is um transfers hp this one transfers attack, this one transfers defense, this one transfers special attack, special defense speed, you get the idea. The ability pill is just here to switch abilities. Um, so we're going to be buying a power weight and a power belt. So then we go into the items here, we give the defense to the Magnemite that has the max um, IVs in defense. And the one for HP for the Magnemite that has max um, IVs in HP. So this one has the power weight for HP, this one has the um, max HP, the other one has the one for defense. So then we go talk to this old wall guy here. And basically the breeding system in this looks different. You have to trade the parents in order to get the eggs. So the parent would be used up, basically. Um, so I'm going to put these two Magnemite in. Magnemite are genderless, so they could breed with their self, Magneton, Magnezone, and Ditto. So as you can see here, the chances are transferring the IDs is 100% due to power weight, 100% due to power belt. Now, as you can see here, they have the same special defense. So it, this is 100% chance of um, transferring over. Um, that would come into play later on. Well, and as you can see here, it's um, a percentage chance, it's the same percentage chance for um, either parent to transfer over their own stat, but it's a higher percentage for the average of the two stats. Because 14 and 30, it's 44, 44 divided by 2, um, it's 22. So that's an 83.3% chance of transferring over the average. So we're going to go ahead and put this to braid random nature, you'll see everything here. Right. So this old guy will give you an egg, you have to provide a Pokeball for the egg. And then what I'm going to do here is I have a Magma in my party over here. Um, the important thing for Magma is that, where is it? Okay. Flame Body. What does this do? Um, well, you know it burns Pokemon inside a, a battle, but outside a battle if you move them to the front, you could see here. And the top left hand corner flame body comes up right which means eggs will hatch faster so um unlike in normal pokemon games where you have to run around with the egg even if you just stand still the egg will hatch but um we're not gonna go ahead and actually just wait on that i mean it'll happen during the video but i'm going to go on and explain to you how it is you breed a 5 iv or 6 iv pokemon Personally, I think breeding 6 IVs are probably a waste of time because if you're going to build a Pokemon, you're going to build them for either attack or special attack. And if you're not using the attack, it'll make sense breed it for the attack if you're using the special attack only. But if you're doing it for attack, 
to make sense to the special attack either so yeah so we're gonna just look at this magnemite over here now as seen Braden before I used a uh, max um, I use a perfect IV HP and a perfect IV defense magnemite I, I brought those two together right so basically you're using two but basically this is how it works so try and follow me on this um, to get a perfect two IV Pokemon you have to use two separate perfect one IVs to get a, a three IV you need two perfect separate two IVs to get a perfect 4 IV Pokemon, 2 separate 3 IV Pokemon. To get a perfect 5 IV, you need 2 separate 4 IV Pokemon. And of course, to get a 6 IV Pokemon, you need 2 separate 5 IV Pokemon. Where they're supposed to have one stat that is not in common. The rest of the stats have to be in common in order to bring to it. So, like uh, um, for the 2 IV, um, I'm going to, if, if you want to bring a 3 IV with 2 2 IV Pokemon. Um, you're going to have to have like um, a Magnemite, for example, with max HP, max defense, and another one with uh, um, max HP and max special attack. And then you give, since they're going to have the same HP IV, the HP will transfer over no matter what, but you'll have to give the one, the one of them the power item for defense and the other the power item for special attack, so the special attack and defense will transfer over along with the HP so you end up with a 3 IV and then you could continue doing that like it's the same process for the 4 and 5 IV like in this case what I did but if you do it like that and you end up with the correct nature which I didn't with it because I'm looking for a timid nature if you end up with a, the correct nature fine that's great you, you are automatically got through there but if you don't end up with the correct nature what you're going to need to do is get one of these well you're going to get you need to get a few of these which is an everstone so basically what you have to end up doing and um it's what i had end up doing um i have to show you this from the pc right this magnemite that i have here has the everstone and you can see it's a timid nature to continuously pass through the timid nature and right now i have max hp max defense which is the same as what i just bred and um, I also have to breed two other Magnemites, like the example I just gave, like one with max HP and max special attack. Breed those together, get the, um, the 3 IV, which would be HP, defense, special attack. Then breed that Magnemite with this one while holding the power item for the special attack, and this one would be holding the Everstone. So that way I end up with a 3 IV Magnemite with the, the uh, Timid Nature. And then I have to do the same thing again for special defense uh, using a 4 IV. And then the same thing again with um, using a 5 IV Magnemite, which I already have on my party here, to get um, the speed so that way I end up getting a 5 IV Magnemite with Timid Nature. And then EV train it and evolve it and uh, yada yada, you, you get the idea. So that process seems overly complicated, it, it kind of takes a while, it's kind of long, but um. That's basically it for breeding. Um, the other thing I want to talk about for breeding is single gender breeding types. So, you know how it have Pokemon with a single gender like Tauros could only be male, Rufflet could only be male, Kangaskhan could only be female, Chansey could only be female, um, things like um, Volibee could be only female. So, if the Pokemon is only female, then it's not really a problem it's just that um because the female is only is always what the egg will be um so you could use male pokemon within the same egg group to transfer over the ivs that's not a problem the problem is when you have single gender um pokemon like Tauros that um that is 100 percent male so you have to use genderless um, breeders with that like ditto and the problem with this is that I don't think you could get a 5 IV ditto in this game and things like destiny not it does not work in this game it's not made for that like I have this um, Taurus here uh, it's a 2 IV but I bred it into this and I could possibly breed it into 3 IV but to get it higher than that is going to be difficult because I have to be relying on RNG and the percentage chance and until they introduce a better way to, um, to 
breed like single gender male Pokemon, um, it's going to be complicated. Okay, well, we could see here the egg hatch. I didn't even realize when it hatched, and it's a max HP, max defense, as we said. So that's basically it for breeding. Um, I hope you were able to follow me on that. Now, that's not it for the guide as yet. Um, I'm going to show you how to go on farm Everstone. So now I know usually if you look at our Everstone farming guide, now I'll just put this Magnemite to one side as the one we just sprayed, and this is the 5 IV one. So, um, people usually would go, um, probably buy the Everstones from the global, global trade link. You could do that, click on item, just type in Everstone here. Um, go on use or let's go for the lowest price and you see there are a lot of everstones here but um instead of having to spend like almost seven thousand dollars on everstone why not farm it yourself and i know usually in other guides for everstones um people usually use quacksire in order to farm everstones but what uh, i use is a stantler with teeth now you might be thinking why use stantler um well, I'll go ahead and show you why, and I'll go ahead and um, I'll show you how exactly it is I farm ever since and how quickly it is you can get it. So we're going to go ahead to go to one island, and we're just going to be surfing this way um, on Kindle Road, right? So we're at Kindle Road here, and the reason we picked Stantler, because Stantler, my Stantler has teeth, uh, um, as you can see here, to get the um, items. So we're going to be farming items off of Geodude and Graveler. So yeah, we're going to be farming the items off of Geodude and Graveler. So the reason I picked Stantler is because Stantler has a Frisk, a frisk ability, and It'll let you know if the Pokemon is holding an item. So if they're holding an item, we use Thief to take the item. If they're not, we run away instead of just wasting time. So I think it's more beneficial that way. So we have Linoon that has... Okay, I just got into a wild encounter. Game just lagged a little bit there. Um, so yeah, just run away from this Pharaoh. Right. So we have Linoon here for um, the Rock Smash. So, okay, find, found nothing there. Yeah, trail of rocks here, we could use Rock Smash on. Okay, so we managed to find a Pokemon here. So we find a Geodude. Let's see if this Geodude is holding anything. Because the first ability will tell you right away. They won't tell you what item it is. Even though, any, okay, so this Geodude isn't holding anything. So we run away instead of just using Teeth instead of wasting time. So moving along. Right, find another Pokemon here. This is another Geodude. Okay, and this Geodude isn't holding anything either. So sometimes you're able to find things really quick, and sometimes it, uh, it takes a while. Okay, so we have a Grappler here. So by fi finding these by um, using Rock Smash, um, we can find either Ever they could be holding Everstones, Hard Stones, uh, Old Amber, um, Helix Fossils, or Dome Fossils. So if you want to farm fossils as well, this is also another a good way to get money to sell it on the global trade link as well. Right, so so far we're not finding anything. The RNG is not really not that good right now. Because sometimes you could find it like easy because I remember finding like four ever soon in a row at one point in time. But we'll keep doing this until we find something. Hopefully we'll find something soon. As you could see on Kindle Road here has a lot of um, rocks for us to use rock smash on. And I know people use um, Quaxire because of the damp ability in the event that they find. Okay, so we find an item here. Yeah, in the event that they find a shiny um, Geodude or Graveler that it doesn't explode on them. But um, see, okay, and we get have a soon from this um, Geodude. Use it quick, run away, and we take the ever soon. And yeah, so we get one ever soon really easy. 
So we have another two rock smash here. Let's just continue on and see what else we could find within this run. So yeah, this rock doesn't have anything. So we have I think um, about three more rocks to smash on this road. Um, situation. Just run away from this. Okay, I can't escape. Es escape from a sleeping cat. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. But when he's awake, I get away from it. Make no sense. Um, all right. So let's see if we find anything from this gravel. All right. This gravel isn't holding anything. Um, usually, Olamba sells for more than um, the Helix Fossil and Dome Fossil. You could get sell Olamba for about eight to nine thousand dollars. The Helix Fossil and Dome Fossil is um, sells for about like five to six thousand. Okay, so I smash all the rocks on this um, trick. So what it is we do? We go inside here. This is um, the Ember Spa, and we run all the way up here, and stand in the middle here, and all our Pokemon will be healed. So we get back all the PP from Teeth. So in the event that your Sampler faints or um, or runs out of PP for teeth, you could come up here and when you come back here, it refreshes. Well, your rocks are supposed to respawn. Sometimes the respawn, respawn doesn't work well for all the rocks, as you could see the rocks down here respawn, but the ones up here aren't. And you could just continue with it, rock smashing and thing, and like that, right? So. So this is the last one I'll be doing because we got the Everstone already. Because I showed you how that works. <laughs> Hopefully you have better luck finding things, but we did manage to find the Everstone quickly. And yeah, that that for, for the item finding farming guide. Now as you would notice is that uh, to buy the power items are uh, a thousand uh, well ten thousand sorry um for one and breeding can get pretty expensive so you need to be able to make money pretty quickly especially when you um breed for specific genders now one thing i for i forgot to mention that before you could breed for specific genders now if the pokemon has a 50 50 chance of being male and female it's five thousand to be a male five thousand to, to be a female guaranteed if they have an off ratio like for like in the case of starter Pokemon where it's a 12.5 ratio to be a female, that 87.5% chance of being male, then to, for them to be a male would guaranteed would be you'd have to pay 5,000, but to be female you would have to pay 21,000, which is a big difference. So you could see I'm here at Island 7, I'm at Island, at Island 7 with my level 100 Persian. Now you could see my this Persian is holding the Silt Scarf. Um, it has it has PD uh, along with other moves. Uh, the Silt Scarf will power up PD, its technician will power up PD. That's to make sure that I want shot things on this island. And looking at this position, you can tell this position is not that great. But this will work. Its stats are horrible. But um this is how you could farm money easy. Come to Island 7, come to this exact spot where, where I'm at. Um, if you have a position with better stats, make sure it has PD. Um, I use a PP up on my own, you could use, well I use 3, you could use it on it. And just use PD and one shot everything. Now as you can see that position was on level 48, so I pick up 480 um, Poké Dollars. Um, whatever level you use PD on, like whatever level Pokemon you use it on, you multiply that by 10 and that is the amount of money you pick up at the end of the battle. So you meet Pokemon here ranging from at level 50 for, for the most, so you could get up to $500 per battle. Because this, this PD is just going to one shot this farm key. Um, if you're... If your potion doesn't really have great stuff like mine, you could always opt to use a choice band because PD is a physical move. And um, yeah, it, when you do this and well while doing this, uh, 
farming money and if I have to do this using out all 32 of my payday um, usually it I would um, make about just over 15,000 just by using out all um, 32 of my payday so it is worth it and you could do it quite quickly because it if you're just you're going into battles one shot and everything you do it very quickly uh, because I already used this about what four times now yeah and it made about probably two thousand dollars so that's uh, somewhere around two thousand dollars so yeah that's basically it for that and yeah so that's it for the breeding guide. I hope you all understood because I explained breeding, single gender breeding, um, talked about genderless Pokemon, claim body, ever soon farming, money guide. So yeah, I think that's basically it. Just remember the Destiny not it does not work in this game. I don't know if they would do that for update. If the Destiny not did work, it might actually it would make um single gender male breeding easier, but um We'll see until then if they would introduce that. Um, well, yeah, that's it for now. And anything else that comes up later, any updates on the Braden, I guess I could make an updated guide. So yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you, what you all think. Hopefully this helped you all with your breeding in Pokemon MMO. So until next time, goodbye.